All right, it's Liam here. So this is a little something I've been uh, working on, uh, starting on yesterday. It's a request for a friend of mine. He wanted a DI box. He's, he's got a studio, so this is a DI box, direct injection box. Um, but he also wants a headphone amp integrating into it as well. So anyway, this is as far as I got. I, I probably could have got it finished, but... Uh, yeah, I kind of lost a will, I had a bite to eat and felt full and laid on the sofa watching crap on YouTube. So, um, anyway, if you don't know what DI box is, basically it would allow, say, you've got the mixing desk. And rather than, you know, sticking a microphone in front of a guitarist or various other musical instruments, anything that's got a, a plug-in jack on it, it would allow you to take the signal from that, you send it into the DI box, it then sends a signal to the desk and there's then another output on the DI box which will either go to that person's amplifier or whatever box of trickery they run their instrument into or you can take the, the signal into the DI box can actually come from some amplifiers might have a, a line level output. Uh, you can even go, and this is going to be built into this one, some guitar amps. You know, the guitarist, he might like the sound of his preamp or he's got an effects box that and goes into his amp and, you know, whatever. You know, basically, it can go through the whole whatever it is that person wants to use. And actually, you can then take a feed from the speaker output because, you know, most guitar amps, apart from the small integrated ones, generally have a separate speaker out. And even some of them do. Uh, so you can then take a speaker level output. Instead of going to the speaker, it will go into this. This then attenuates it down to line level, send it to the desk and likewise then passes back through so they can still plug their speaker in. So that's what this is. This is the DI part of it. Like I said, I've got to put a headphone amp on here. I've got a few more bits and bobs to put in, but I, was, I got to this point yesterday and I tested it. So <sighs> the schematic isn't exactly correct. You can see as I was going along, I was trying to think of different configurations for stuff. So... But in essence, there's a transformer. Now, you can do active balance line with just op amps, um, but you never beat the performance of a transformer. If you short one end of the transformer to ground, it will still output <coughs> the same voltage across the winding, but instead of it being floating, so say this one was outputting 3 volts RMS on each, uh, on, you know, it'd be 3 volts on the hot, 3 volts on the cold, 6 volts RMS total and then obviously a 0V what would happen is if you shorted one output to ground then you just get 6 volt RMS on the hot lead or cold lead whichever way around you did it it's very flexible it's very robust it allows perfect isolation between the source and um, you know the, the desk you're sending it to <clears throat> so it comes to you and I've just got it present this is just being powered by a cheap Chinese 15 volt uh, wall wart I might, uh, well, it, it's not great. It works, it, it, you know, at some point I'll probably knock up a better supply for it, but it was just what I had on hand for now for testing. So power comes in, there's just a small 10 ohm resistor and a never capacitor to filter it. It then goes to a potential, a potential, a potential divider, which gives us our half uh, VCC, half supply voltage reference for biasing our up amps and stuff. Now, the original design I had, I was just going to use one big capacitor and reference everything back to that. <coughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, because the op amps are floating and we don't want to pass any DC through the transformer primary, I did originally think, well, I'll just reference everything back to this single point. You can see I labeled various marks on X1 and stuff. However, upon building it, um, you can see. You can see bits I've crossed out various iterations of the design as I was going through thinking it out. I overlooked one uh, important point. If this is supplying the bias voltage to the op amp, obviously this is the non-inverting input, well, the transformer secondary would go back down to it and be in phase with the op amp. So <clears throat> if the static DC output on the op amp rose, it would get fed back through the transformer to the potential divider, uh, which would then increase that voltage, which would raise the bias voltage, or sync it whichever way around the op amp happened to be doing it and it, sure enough it did it actually stabilized but upon applying signal it was starting to do all kinds of weird things and i realized that was where i'd gone wrong so 
I now have a smaller, took the big cap out. So there's a cap for the main PSU, there's a cap for the uh, bias voltage, and then there's a cap for the transformer. You've got to be very careful if coupling a transformer via a capacitor because you can end up with a resonant circuit and at low frequencies you'll get a, a very big peak. Well, this transformer, it, it worked out, uh, you know, it, it would only be need about 22 or so microfarads. Um, you know, and that, that peak would be quite low down in the, you know, it would be below the audio range really. So I've gone massively bigger. It's got a 470 microfarad capacitor on it, which, which yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, like less than one hertz or something. It's resonance frequency is so... It's fine. Um, again, you need to keep low frequency waveform out of the transformer because the core will saturate and you get all sort of nasty artifacts. <clears throat> so to do that, there's just a very basic um, filter going in. I ended up with 100 nanofarads and 47K just purely because they were what I had in the parts box. I couldn't find any 220 nans. So it's... Off the top of my head, I think the filter response is about 40 hertz, it's 3 dB down, and then obviously it falls, or 6 dB, whichever way it is, then it falls to 12 decibels per octave um, from that point as you go down in frequency. So it's a high pass filter, I set it about 40 hertz. <clears throat> and there's another one on here, this is actually, I, I ripped. Yeah, what is it? Yes, 0.15 microfarads in conjunction with the 100 kilohertz then forms another filter at about 10 hertz. So after 10 hertz, which is below anything you can ever hear anyway, 20 hertz is about the lower threshold of human hearing. So at 10 hertz, it then goes to an 18 decibel slope. And uh, yeah, that's been infrasonic sound filtering, well, uh, signal filtering. So it, it's... <clears throat> you don't need... For like guitar microphone you, you're not going to leave that lower point in the uh, audio spectrum so he has asked if i can build in one without this filtering uh, for that i should probably either go fully electronic because the full electronic one you can go to such low frequencies without it really hurting anything so i just wanted to keep anything that might cause core saturation and you know uh, degradate the performance of this circuit away from that transformer so that's the base 60 speaker level again. I was looking at various configurations. I've gone with this one. So this is the input jack. Uh, there's going to be a switch here. Switches between line or speaker. Speaker level is a 22 kilo ohm one watt resistor in series with a one kilo ohm one, and then the um, level potentiometer will connect to that. And that obviously, then goes to the actual input up here onto the DI box and when you put it online obviously it just comes straight in from line and it just goes straight up so that is the circuit um, I was having a bit of a probe around last night with my uh, digital oscilloscope I've got some waveforms and stuff like that you know I didn't bother doing screen capture and loading it to a computer I couldn't be bothered I just took them with my phone camera so hopefully if I can figure out how to do it with the piece of cheap software I have on here I should be able to stitch them into the video. Point, but they looked uh, pretty good. Uh, square wave response was, uh, you know, very good. Um, FFT showed I had my main fundamental and then basically any harmonics were just lost in the noise floor between the power supply, the oscilloscope uh, and just general electrical noise in the environment. Whatever, if there's any distortion artifacts, it was certainly swamped by, um, you know, it was, it was unable to be seen by my oscilloscope anyway, which is a good sign. It's not a true distortion analyzer. You can ask an expensive piece of kit really to have a decent one of them. I don't have one, but it's good enough for just getting a general idea. So anyway, um, tonight's mission is put the headphone amp in here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know, make it capable of driving low impedance phones. I'd just go with an op amp. Uh, that'd be fine for high impedance uh, headphones. But if anyone comes along with low impedance ones, so I'm going to have to just knock something up for that. 
The headphone amp isn't actually driven off the DI box. It's going to be fed from the aux signal from the desk. Um, so uh, it's going to be completely uh, separate circuit. It's only just going to be getting its power from the uh, same supply. This is getting its power from. Um, it's going to be mono. Um, yeah, again, he's asked for a stereo, one, which I will do at some point. But this is this is just a prototype. So I'm going to get this finished off. I've got a ubiquitous ubiquitous a, a black plastic box to put it in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's I should be taking it to him in a couple of days when I'm around there, and let him trial it and tell me if he's found any significant issues with it or anything like that. So. Well, like this circuit is, if you look at the driver, the signal comes in uh, from the, uh, you know, from our filter circuit in our level control, drives to this op amp, non-inverting. DC feedback is supplied by this 100 kilo ohm resistor. <coughs> Negative feedback, there's a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor and a one microfarad capacitor. Uh, I think it's one microfarad. Yeah, one microfarad. It's uh, and it actually the. I'm only driving one of the primaries. The second primary is used purely for feedback. So um, it's uh, it's in parallel with a second op amp. If you notice, look, this op amp isn't connected to the feedback network. It is purely driven is a voltage follower off the first op amp. So whatever this one does, this one does. Two times 220 ohm resistors are just paralleling load resistors to stop the two op amps interacting with each other. They also uh, add a degree of damping on the output just to sort of isolate the, tran the uh, transformer from the op amps. It stops, it helps stop things breaking into oscillation and stuff. Uh, it works very well, I must say. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll get some waveforms up. You can see some of the things that are going on. Uh, the transformer originally in my original design was all going to come back to this seven and a half volt supply and be floating um, but to be honest that can cause issues with you know capacitive coupling and stuff it can inject noise back into this so it now because it is capacitor coupled on its own capacitor it is now referenced to the zero volt rail as well um, so yeah uh, again these are just uh, some resistors to help isolate the transformer output from the line they need to be low impedance because obviously you don't want the signal to be able to pick up large amounts of noise but it you've got long cable runs and stuff they're quite capacitive and inductive so it just it helps you you know you don't end up with some kind of resonant circuit here or high capacitance on here ending up being fed back via the coupling between the windings to the op amps and causing things to oscillate and ring so it's yeah it's basically that so um anyway i need to crack on and put something on here, uh, start working on the case, and hopefully my next video should be something else working and being tested here. <coughs> right, so this is annoyingly took longer than it should have to actually start doing anything. <coughs> Sketched out a few ideas, gone um, from my parts bin, I was going to build I was going to stick some just some like BD139140s on the output of one of the op amps, uh, just buy some like this, drive from the capacitors. Um, bugged if I could find any. So, anyway, scooching around, I found a TDA2050. So, in this one, that's what's going to drive the headphones because you can drive high impedance phones straight off an op amp, but a lot of modern phones, especially people who use them, like you can get good phones now. For smartphones, they're only like 18 and 32 ohm and stuff, so it'd just be too low in impedance for an op amp. Um, it's uh, 20 past 2 in the morning. Um, <laughs> uh, sleep patterns, eh? But anyway, I'm just filming this more because Spotify sucks balls. Um, just trying to put some music on, on it, and it just play, stop, play, stop. Fine, straight over the phone. Just Google Audio Chromecast, it was just not working anyway. I had a look on Google, and it seems to be a very common problem, and by all accounts, Spotify have done nothing to try and rectify it. So, 
Um, I actually have a Deezer account. Well, I don't. It's me mate's one, but he lets me use it. So <clears throat> I've just cancelled my Spotify subscription, and I am now on Deezer. So uh, yeah, screw you, Spotify. Anyway, crack on and hopefully get somewhere now. I just uh, I didn't like the idea of using the, the TDA twenty fifty, and these things are shite for trying to put on this board because they're five pin and the leg spacing's all wrong anyway just scratching around found this uh board out of an amplifier i fixed a bit back uh, it does work i actually just stripped it down and built a small valve amp into the case it was in so anyway i'm gonna scavenge some transistors out of here and go with my original design of a discrete output stage driven by an op amp so um Balance line receiver is now on here, so yeah, I've just got to put the uh, put the transistors and stuff in. Uh, maybe get them in here somewhere. I don't know. There's, there's plenty of room on here. Just um, I wanted to go with a true signal follows a zero V rail approach on this, so this is why it's taking up a bit more room than it really needs to. I could have, yeah, you know. But anyway, so um, that's the next plan. It's actually getting light outside. It is now. Let's have a look at that. Ten past three. So um, yeah, plodding on and see where I get next. So I've got the transistors out. Um, but I have no idea which is an N and which is a P type. So I could Google it, but uh, I figured. Yeah. Be a good little way to just show you if you're unsure on something. If you set your multimeter to the diode check setting, uh, it's generally on the 2K. Well, these are a TO126, so they are always, apart from odd exceptions, you put them writing face down, so basically the back's just towards you. Some will have the metal tab, these are plastic pack. And on a TO126, it then goes base collector emitter. So um, if I put my terminals on from my multimeter, I can figure out which one is the N and which is the P type. So just bear with me. So this one here, just dropped it, is the BC669 or 2SD669, whatever it's going to be. So I've got my positive terminal on the base. So let's get the meter in here. If I go... On the emitter, you can see it reads 668 ohms, which means that's a forward biased uh, PN junction, well, NP. And if I go on the collector, 665. So this is the NPN, because obviously the um, electron flow from negative to positive is the uh, P junction and the N junction. And the same is for the base to collector. So that is an MPN, and therefore the 649 is the PMP. So I'm just going to check that. Go negative terminal on the base. It's fun with one hand to do. So if I go to the collector and the emitter, even, because it's the easy one to get to on the outside, they are 647. Focus. 648 and if I go to the emitter if I can actually get to it without uh, shorting the probes out it reads 637 you'd have to trust me on that so yeah the 649 is the stupid pen P type and the 669 is the N type so yeah like I say if this was a TO220 or TO247, TO3P, anything like that, they follow a pretty standard base collector emitter. But just on the 126, you have to flip the transistor over and it's still then base collector emitter. Obviously, in reverse, it's emitter collector base. So, yeah, even the MOSFETs do it. MOSFETs in TO220 package and stuff go gate drain source, which is the equivalent of base collector emitter. So, uh, yeah, anyway, carry on. It's now 24 in the morning. Nice, nice. 
Liam's time updates for no apparent reason, but uh, yeah, anyway. Right, this is uh, where I've gotten so far. Um, it takes a long time to build anything up on this stuff because you you got like just a little, where is it? It's, it's just like a drill bit, you know, a piece of plastic and you just obviously put it in the hole you want and just twist it a few times to break the track um, because you're always, you know, you, you, you have multiple circuits on one track so you have to make sure you don't accidentally connect one circuit to the other. Um, <clears throat> but likewise, you know, I can remember the first time I tried to attempt building anything on this stuff and also you put your components in and go, oh, there you are. I'll, I'll just drill that either side and then I won't accidentally connect anything to it and then Sod's Law will have it that you end up wanting to connect to that track <clears throat> and have to put bits of bridging wire and stuff in. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I just do it as I go along now. You know, when you can truly make sure nothing's going to connect to it, then cut it off. So, made a few mistakes along the way. I had to remove a few components. Somehow ended up putting a 10 ohm resistor in where I should have had a 10k resistor. And, but, tested the balance line. Uh, receiver that's working, it's biased as it should, and the output driver's working. Got the 0V and power wiring into this. Uh, again, signal follows earth is the term. So uh, the last thing on here at present is the uh, resistor for the feedback network. Uh, feedback network's in, one of the drive transistors is in, some various bias components. So I've got just another one of these to put in, these capacitors across here which drive it uh, yeah and then that's about ready to go it's then onto the case after that um, obviously gonna have to just drill some holes in the corner of this to mount it <coughs> um, yes yeah, me resistors for the speaker line level switch so the board's almost done but it is <laughs> Lean with the time again. It's now half five in the morning. The sun has come up. It's quite bright outside, and all of a sudden, it's just hit me. That I suddenly feel tired. So, I didn't set out on some mission to work all night and get this finished. It was just that I wasn't tired. My sleep patterns are all over. Um, so, I basically work on the principle if I'm awake, then I'll do stuff the awake person does, and when I get tired, I'll sleep. And now I'm feeling tired, so. I'm probably just going to, I'm not even going to bother going to bed. I'm just going to lie down on the sofa and catch a couple of hours. Uh, probably wake up when everyone starts heading off to work, slamming their car doors. And why, why does everyone always start their car up with the stereo flat out? Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. So that's me for now. Uh, hopefully, um, well, get it finished maybe. Hope get a bit more done a bit later on today. Um, see what happens. Right, so uh, that is now the board uh, up and running. So that's the headphone amp in this section, uh, driver stage for the uh, DO box in this section. Balance inputs are working, the output's working. I actually just drove a 16 ohm load with this amp quite happily uh, yeah. see how it performs in the box I might like try and line the box with tin foil or something but um, or aluminium foil it um, if I run it off batteries it is absolutely whisper quiet um, if I run it off the, the Chinese power supply it's not bad but you can just that thing is kicking out RF and you can just, I mean if you start probing around on the board with your fingers it's that classic noise just being injected into everything I mean I've got a 100 nanofarad cap right across where it comes in and then an RC filter here but obviously the noise is on both rails and it happily radiates off the board tracks just into absolutely everything so um, see what happens when it's in the case if it's still doing it in the case then I'm just gonna have to knock up a power supply which isn't difficult um, do you know the Chinese thing's good for testing it with? It's currently limited to an amp. Uh, so yeah, I mean the other option is to 
cut the lead on the Chinese power supply and shove some filtering in power supply end might help but I kind of feel like it's also kicking out RF all out of the case and everything so anyway that's it so far so next is start to drill it out and start thinking about getting it in the box um, so yeah see how that goes so um, case progress so far uh, decided everything input for the DI box will be on this side so speaker line switch the in and outputs for it to pass through and the uh, level control um, so this is where the headphone amp is going to be outputs are going to go next to or beneath this figure that out in a minute um, power sockets going to come in this side and then on the back we have an XLR out for the balance drive to the desk and a XLR in for the aux in and obviously I've just gone with a male and female type so the two don't accidentally get mixed up so um, that one's going to be out that one's going to be in so yeah steadily making progress just uh, keep plodding on right then finally um Christ, this just took a long time. <clears throat> Started on this on Saturday. Uh, spent a good chunk of Sunday on it into the early hours of Monday morning. And about eight hours Monday and we're now Tuesday. <clears throat> I had to give up last night. I just had enough. Um, so yeah, about an hour today just finished off. Bear in mind, this is just a prototype. So, you know, it takes a long time when you're building on this their board stuff and you you know you end up putting something in the wrong place or you you know you technically designing it is i'm working it um so you'll put some bits in then suddenly realize you've overlooked something or you want to modify something so you want to solder it and change it and which has happened a few times here but yeah so <laughs> on the side we've got high level low level signal select that's the um, level adjust to the desk. <coughs> Back we've got our aux in and our uh, balanced out for the desk, both on our XLR. This is balanced in as well. Um, looking down from the top, this is our input stage for our DI box. All this is DI box. This bit up here is a balanced line receiver and a headphone amp. Front we've got the volume control for the headphone out, headphone out, and power on the side. Uh, probably could do putting a power LED on it, but I'm a bit pushed for time today because I'm actually off round the person who I've built it for. I'm off round their house in a couple of hours, so I just want to run a few more tests on this. But yeah, uh, obviously once the lid's on it, it will just be a rather plain looking black box, but... Um, so anyway, yeah, I finally actually made a video where I've built something and completed it rather than just talking about the idea of building something and yeah, went around my mates earlier with it, um, try it out, well, first thing I had to do was swap the uh, XLRs over because it turns out uh, his desk, that's an output, that's an input, this box end. <coughs> um, it's got a problem. Uh, if you say you come out the XLR and go into the desk, which is the DI box out, if I just got my phone, start playing something, feed it into the DI box in, send it out, lovely, clean, nice signal. Um, and again, if I feed my phone into the headphone socket, bring the headphone out, nice, quiet, clean signal. But as soon as you connect the desk to both of these, uh, it starts buzzing and humming and making lots of noise. And I think I know why it's doing. Right, so <clears throat> after having a poke around last night, I finally found where the problem was. <clears throat> Just 
down here, um, there was a 10, it's like here, look, 10 ohm resistor, 100 nanofarad cap, 10 ohm resistor, 100 nanofarad cap, these are, they're loop isolators, so basically, you know, they just remove a very low impedance between where the signal zero volt connects and the uh, zero V circuitry in here, that way you can't create a loop. I very foolishly, well, you know, made a mistake. I put this 10 ohm resistor down here with the intention of connecting the shield and that lock to it, but I'd ended up connecting all the internal shielding loop breaker side of it instead of zero V side. So, um, simply removing that 10 ohm resistor there, putting a wire link in and moving it up to there, killed the hum absolutely dead. I then had another problem. For some reason, I was getting huge amounts of distortion through the headphone amp. Um, I tried decreasing the value of the resistors that supply the uh, base bias, the ones that actually pull it to the rails. It was still there. Then removed the simple resistor I had in here, which was limiting current, put an LED in. And I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm holding now 600 millivolts or so between the two, well, it's about 400 millivolts. I think I'm dropping about 200 millivolts across each one of these 10 ohm resistors. Um, so it's running 20 milliamps of current on idle. <clears throat> Still doing it. And then it dawned on me when I was poking around in here yesterday. Um, I touched this wire, which is part of the BIOS network for here. And I must have, I think... I don't know, something happened anyway, all of a sudden, because I had the headphones in, there was a loud pop and the buzzing got a lot quieter. This was still whilst it was buzzing, and I thought, well, that was odd. And anyway, yeah, probing the output from the op-amp, it was actually the op-amp, it wasn't this transistor stage. I've been chasing a gremlin in here that didn't exist. The issue wasn't with this transistor stage. Something had gone in the op-amp. It was actually the op-amp itself. Instead of a pure sine wave, it looked just like crossover distortion. But it wasn't. Um, pulled the op amp out, put a new one in, done problem solved. So uh, it is finally working. It's not humming, it's not buzzing, it's not distorting, it's not oscillating. So hopefully go around my mates again later. Uh, if I go out on my bike, weather looks nice. So I'm going to go out for a ride this evening. And knit around my mates, take this round and attempt to. Hopefully it should work splendidly.